In a continuation of videos, I've been looking at wiring lighting circuits. Today, we're gonna to change tack slightly, and that means there is a different downloadable link. So in the description, there is a link that takes you through to this document here, which can be downloaded and used to run alongside these videos. We're this time gonna be looking at using PVC singles. So single insulated conductors that are stranded for greater flexibility because they're pulled in through things such as metal and plastic conduits and trunking systems. So this time we haven't got any outside PVC as we've seen in previous videos. And in previous videos we were using PVC, PVC twin and CPC or twin and earth cables. But for this conduit looping method, we don't need this type of cable. And we're gonna be working with single insulated cables, which means we have a greater flexibility of where our conductors are gonna go and they go to exactly where we need them to go and not be trapped inside a cable which has other conductors that might not be needed at the location we get to. So this is downloadable within the actual description itself and it talks you through a little bit of an overview on using PVC singles to wire lighting circuits, reminds you that the minimum cross-sectional area of the conductors is 1.5 millimeters squared. And then we've got some wiring diagrams or circuit diagrams, whichever way around we're gonna look at them. So we've got some circuit diagrams. We've got an exercise here that maybe your college lecturer might wanna use or you might wanna build this at home. I built it in plastic conduit. There are other videos on the channel that show me wiring through this system using the conduit looping method. And that's in my lighting circuit and my playlist called Taking the Feed or Supply to the Switch. So in both those lighting circuit playlists and you'll recognize that board when you see it. Got some test sheets for you in case you wanted to fill those in. Again, there's loads of videos on testing those circuits, as well as a marking criteria if your college lecturer used them. And then we've got these, which are wiring diagrams. Okay, we're gonna look at these through a series of videos on the conduit loop in method. And we'll work uh, eventually with this one at the back, creating different scenarios. So let's first of all look at these ones here, which I've classed as being circuit diagrams. So these circuit diagrams here give us that overview of what we're gonna be doing with our conductors and can help you wire the circuit. So it also can be used as a wiring diagram. We've got a line and neutral here on our drawing. However, I haven't shown the CPC connection because the CPC actually will take the shortest and most logical route through the system and not necessarily one that the drawing can show. So if we go back to this one just here, if my CPC came out and went, say, to here, we'd then drop a CPC down to the switch. Now, if we went on our drawing, we look that we go to the switch first and then the light, that doesn't make logical sense, does it? Because actually the CPC would have been dropped off at the light first and then go down to the switch itself. So I'm gonna leave off the CPCs off this drawing and just concentrate on those live conductors. So here we're simulating as if it was in the consumer unit that we've got our fuse and our neutral link. So this would be our neutral bar within our actual consumer unit. This would be the six amp possibly circuit breaker that's feeding the light in circuits. We've got three colors of pens that we're gonna use. I'm not gonna over strike it this time with yellow as I've done in my previous drawings. So I'm gonna use the green as a CPC, blue neutral and brown as our line conductor. Nice and simple, one way lighting circuit, one way switch, a light fitting, come out of the consumer unit and we're gonna wire it through. Remember, they're in PVC singles and can go anywhere we like. So our line conductor will start in the consumer unit and it's gonna go, I'll put it through the breaker so it becomes effectively, looks like a, a, a symbol for a rewirable fuse, but it's a fuse. So we come through to here and we connect it into the common terminal of our switch. So if we look at our one gang, one way switch, we're gonna bring our permanent line connecting straight into the actual common itself. So the line connection comes straight into the common. So in here, into the common. And then from L1, we're gonna come out to feed our lighting point itself. So we come out of the L1 terminal and we feed onto our lamp itself. Hopefully you're using a ruler, I'm doing it freehand. And I've caught the side of the omega symbol there. Okay, so make sure you get it in the right position. So line comes through the switch and goes straight to the lamp itself. That makes logical sense. And where do we need the neutral to appear? We need the neutral to appear on the other side of the lamp. This is a symbol for a neutral link and we'll only need the blue to be either side of it and no line straight through it. Lots of my learners make that mistake. So we're gonna bring that straight out of there, out of the neutral link, like so. Simple. More of a circuit diagram than it is a wiring diagram. 
The line goes to common, common of our light switch. From L1, we come up to our lighting point and our neutral goes directly to our light itself. That makes logical sense, doesn't it? That we've got that route taken. Now a CPC will need to appear at both the switch and the lighting point. And again, when you're wiring it, you will take the most economical route round with those. We're gonna work with these, so don't worry if you haven't quite grasped it at the first attempt. We're gonna come back to this and look at it, apply it in a wiring diagram as well. So from the consumer unit, the line goes to common. A separate cable obviously from L1 comes up to the lamp. The neutral comes in this case from the consumer unit directly straight to the lamp itself, which does mean that this type of light fitting that has the looping terminal in it. So we've got a looping terminal there. So that looping terminal there isn't needed in this system because we're gonna be using the conduit looping method where the supply goes first to the switch and we only ever end up having a switching line up at the light fitting. Now I know a lot of colleges still use these when wiring in the conduit method, but remember you don't need the center block. There is a light fitting that you can use that only has three terminals that would be better suited for this system and hopefully your college are using those style. Those will only have switching line, a neutral and a protective conductor, so a CPC terminal within them. Hopefully I've shown one on the actual screen itself so you can see what that looks like as well. So that was our one way uh, circuit diagram. If we move on, let's have a look at what happens when we go for two way. So we bring this one in here. Again, we're showing it from the consumer unit and we'll look at how we can pick up the supply when we've got not uh, a route to the consumer unit for it when we're doing our wiring diagrams. Again, our permanent line is gonna come from our consumer unit to a common terminal. We're gonna have two cables linking across L1 and L2 here, which we call strappers. And then from our common of our second switch, we're gonna go directly to the lamp. And obviously we come back around with our neutral. So we're now using, our two-way switches. So if we look here, we've got our two-way switch with our common terminal L1 and L2. But this time, unlike previous drawings when we used our three-core cable, if you remember back on those type of ones, often um, we'd have to identify these with brown sleeving, wouldn't we? Because the gray and the black are actually switching line conductors. But as we're wiring this system in singles, we can make those conductors between the switches all brown. So we don't need any brown sleeving, we can identify them by the color, which is brown for switching line, line, strappers, etc. So we can actually use brown conductors, so there's no need to identify those. From the consumer unit then, we're gonna bring our line conductor to common. So we bring our first single cable in, which is our permanent line into the common connection. We're gonna come across from L1, L2. So we're gonna take them from L1 and L2 to L1 and L2 of our second switch. And they're gonna be our strappers. So our strappers come across. Again, they're in brown singles. And then from the common of our last switch, we go across to our lighting point itself, making sure we strike it against the right part of the lamp there. So there we go, we've, we've gone through that. To make it work, we'll obviously need a neutral. To make it safe, we'll need a CPC. CPCs won't be drawn in on this one, but we'll bring our neutral round. Bring it through our neutral link. Remember, no line through it. We just go either side of the neutral link. Okay, let's see if it's on then. That'll be the next thing for this one. Is this circuit currently in the on position? Well, let's follow it through. We've got a neutral this side, so that's fine. The line connection comes into common. It comes down the blade of this switch here comes along this strapper here, but this blade is in the opposite position, so this blade is not made here, so the lamp would not illuminate. These are two-way switches, and we're used to seeing them at home, possibly bottom of the stairs and top of the stairs, turning on a landing light. And if the light is off, we know if we operate either switch, it doesn't matter which one you operate, it will come on. And likewise, if it was on, whichever one you operate will go off. So it won't matter now which of these switches that we operate it will come on. So let's use this pen here as if we've now made that line there. We've moved that into this position. Let's follow the line through. It comes down this blade, it comes up here, and it would illuminate the lamp. Okay, likewise, if we go back to our original one, we can see that it's off. If I was to operate this switch, so I move that blade to there, we come up along the strapper along here, and the lamp will illuminate. So we can easily see there that the two-way switching has been done. We've used all brown conductors for our line switching line strappers, whatever you want to call them. And our neutral is obviously in blue. Our CPCs would go around in a logical pattern. And again, we'll work with that in a wiring diagram to see how that circuit can be wired logically through a conduit system in another presentation. 
Let's move that on now so you know where we're going next. I'm gonna take you to two-way and intermediate switching. So all we've done now is add in an intermediate switch. So if we go back to our original drawing, you can see they look very similar, but just an intermediate switch has gone in here. In other words, it's breaking the strappers. So that's been inserted in there like so. And again, all our conductors will be brown for our switching line, line and strappers, as well as a blue neutral. And we remember the intermediate switch actually switches across ways, and we'll talk about that in the classroom for its actual position. But you can have a play around with this one when we've wired it in with our colors to work out whether the lamp is on or off. So our intermediate switch, just to remind you, has four terminals. And we can use all four of those, but if you remember in other videos we've done using twin and CPC cables, we ended up putting the black conductor in a connector within the intermediate switch. But in this system, we don't need to because we're only going to be using PVC singles, which means we can take just the conductors we need to the location in which we want them. Let's pull those in then. So let's bring our line from our consumer unit through our overcurrent protection device straight into the common of the first switch. We bring our strappers into our intermediate switch. From our outgoing side, we come out to our next intermediate switch. There's not an in and out on these, but there is a set of two, a set of two. But just remember, we've rotated it round. So if you end up using this as a wiring diagram, that we're not putting our strappers across these here and here, it's the top two and the bottom two. We've just rotated that switch round. So we come from the two-way switch into either the top two or the bottom two, doesn't matter which way round we have it. And then we come out of the top two or the bottom two to the next one. So effectively our switches are being laid down like so. So that'd be the first two-way switch and that'd be the intermediate switch. L1 and L2 come in either the top or the bottom of this switch, depending on which way around you have it and not across the sides. And some of my learners have, have got that intermediate switch wrong where they've actually come in with a set across the sides rather than top and bottom. Hopefully that will make logical sense too. If you don't, just whip back and just listen to that again. And then out of the common of the last two way switch, you go directly to the lamp. In order to make it work, we'll bring our neutral through here, off our neutral link into that position there. And there's our circuit diagram now for our two-way intermediate, of which we will use it as a wiring diagram as well in other videos. So this, this circuit diagram here can help us wire the um, conduit system lights, but we're gonna have to work out our CPC route, etc. as well. Let's do one of them. I hope this video has been some help.